A few hundred yards downstream of Roger's house, I continued to fish by myself, catching small wild brown trout. Each of them probably descendants of the fish that Walton had caught here. I then spied a young girl watching me from a public footbridge. A milkmaiden, carefree as the girl Walton had written about. My mind drifted back a few centuries and I thought of asking her to sing me a song. But that was ridiculous. After all, this was just a young girl out for a walk. Then a trout struck my line and I was taken back to the task at hand. Perfect timing, I thought. I'll get a chance to show off my angling skills, which will provide me an opportunity to say hello. When I turned around, she had disappeared, up the trail, into the hazel wood. And I wondered if I had even seen her at all. After the first publication of The Complete Angler in 1653, Isaac Walton spent the remaining 30 years of his life in Hampshire, where he died at the age of 90. Today he is buried in Winchester Cathedral. The people had somehow forgotten about him, so they were using the chapel where his gravestone lies as a broom closet. Can you imagine? over Walton's very grave. The chapel has since been restored. This modest place reflects Walton's simplicity. Says Piscator to Venator, As for my simplicity, if you mean such simple men that lived in those times when there were fewer lawyers, I say, sir, it is these men that are simply contented and find happiness in a drop of dew. Because they're thankful for what they have and are not concerned with always getting, getting, catching, and corrupting. In his 90 years, Walton had become familiar with personal tragedy. Besides living through a bloody civil war, he had outlived two wives and several children. Disillusioned with his country and times, he found that there are very few things that we ever indeed have. A friend, a lover, or a relative are all mortal. Walton found solace in angling, a safe way in which we can experience failure and learn from it without being irreparably damaged when we lose a fish. In particular, a four pound brown trout I might have landed had I not left the net in the car. On my final day in England, I fed the fish bread on the River Test. The trout had become town pets, and I knew I could fish this river, but I had little desire to cast to them. I felt utterly complacent, and was in Walton's words, sick of being well. I had a yearning to somehow return to the primitive, to cast a thread and bent safety pin with some bait, preferably a worm, in the pond across from my home in Easton, Connecticut. 